Minecraft 1.19 The Wild update added quite a few things, but now that the update has been out for a while, here are 20 Minecraft 1.19 changes you didn't know about. So of course mud was added to the update in the mangrove swamps, however mangrove swamps are actually quite rare, and so if you can't find them, there is still a way to get mud. If you simply right click in some water with some glass bottles to make water bottles, then right click with the water bottles on dirt blocks, it will convert the dirt into mud with a really cool sploosh sound effect as well. And I like this because mud is something that has a lot of new uses to it, especially with the mud bricks, the packed mud, all these different things. And having that resource not be limited to the mangrove swamps really expands its possibilities. When two frogs are bred with a slime ball in Minecraft, of course they will put down the frog spawn in the water. However, something you may not know is that once this frog spawn hatches, and we have a whole bunch of tadpoles that generate in, these tadpoles work exactly the same as fishes. So for instance, if one of these got on the land, it would jump around and suffocate just like a fish would. And of course this does make sense, but it is interesting to see an aquatic creature that cannot survive in the air turn into a frog that can. In the ancient cities and deep dark biome, skulk shriekers will spawn around. And of course, if you alert one, you get this interesting looking particle effect come up from it. But something you may not know is that you can grab these with a silk touch hoe, or really any tool of silk touch, of course, just a hoe being the fastest. And if you go somewhere else and place this down, you can actually still alert these, and they will still have the particles come out of them. But as you can see, there is absolutely no effect we get from it, so this does not summon in the warden. However, you can totally pick these up in survival, place them back down, and have this super cool sort of sonic looking effect come out of it. Mud and grass blocks generate on the floor of the mangrove swamps, and like most places when you mine up a grass block, of course there's no grass blocks underneath it, it just goes down to dirt and then down to stone rather quickly. But something that is unique about the mud blocks is that they're not just one block deep. In fact, they go down incredibly deep. Depends on the area you're in. But for instance, down here we can go down three blocks with the mud. And we have actually a rather deep area of mud we can mine from around here. What's also interesting is the roots of the mangrove trees will actually extend all the way down to the very bottom of this mud layer. So for instance, if we mine around here, we may run into a mangrove root right here, or a muddy mangrove root. And you'll notice this stops once it gets down to the beginning of the stone layer, not just once it goes below the surface here. So when you're mining underneath here, you'll definitely find a lot of mangrove roots that go all the way down, really showing off a realistic type of tree root. Minecraft Sound Engine got an update in 1.19 on Java Edition, so if you go to your options and then Music and Sounds, you can turn on Directional Audio. Now of course stereo audio sort of has that, so for instance this sheep will sort of sound like it's to my left and not just anywhere around me with the same volume in both headphones or in both speakers. But with the 3D directional audio on, we have an even better sound engine running here, which will give us much more precise locations for certain sounds. And although it can take a little while to get used to, it can make it a lot easier to know where sounds are coming from. And also when you're, let's say, fighting mobs and want to know where a creeper or a skeleton or a zombie is around you, then you can kind of know that a little bit more accurately, making it easier to find them. When you mine certain blocks, blocks in the game, like let's say skulk blocks or ore blocks, they will drop experience. However, if they're exploded by TNT, they will not drop experience, but in 1.19 that's been changed. So if we place down a piece of TNT, light it and stand back, when that explodes, the blocks that those break will actually drop experience, as you can see right here. It makes TNT mining be a bit more of a good idea. So for instance, something like with the new Skulk blocks in 1.19, mining them with TNT is actually a viable option. Wolves, tamed wolves, or dogs have definitely been in the game for a very long time, but ever since they were added, there was a bug with them, where basically on the bottom of their nose, there would be a Z-fighting texture, which more or less means that underneath its nose, there'd be two textures that are trying to be in the same position. And that would give you this sort of look where there's these flashing back and forth. And you can see now this has been fixed in 1.19. And what's interesting about this is this is actually an incredibly old bug. And it's been in the game since at least 2013, but definitely even older than that. And you can see now there's no Z fighting issue there. So if you're ever looking at your wolf's muzzle, you'll see that that nine-year-old bug has finally been fixed. So since you can get mud blocks both from the mangrove swamp and also just by right-clicking on dirt with a bottle of water, 
water, Mojang has also made clay renewable, because if you place down some mud in any real pattern you want, just with some blocks of air beneath it, then beneath that put down some pieces of dripstone, what this will do is this will actually drain out the mud, and so this takes renewable mud and turns it also into a source of renewable clay. And because clay can be smelted to turn into bricks, or it can be smelted to turn into terracotta or glazed terracotta, this really makes a lot more items in the game be easy to get, especially early game, and it also adds some more use to the mud block itself. Now Minecraft 1.19 has added 8 types of goat horns into the game that will drop when a goat rams into certain types of naturally spawned in blocks. However, there's two groups of these goat horns. The first four types, ponder, sing, seek, and feel, are all dropped by normal goats, which 98% of goats spawn in as. Also, these four standard types can be found in the pillager outposts, making them somewhat common, although still a cool item to have. However, the other four horns here are actually very rare, and not only that, I would say they're probably some of the rarest items in the entire game, if not the rarest, even more rare than an enchanted golden apple, because you can only get these four types when they are dropped by a screaming goat, that rams into a naturally occurring block. Now screaming goats are 2% of standard goats that spawn in or can be bred, so of course you could technically breed goats a bunch of times and get maybe one or two screaming goats out of it, but because when a goat rams into a block its horn will actually drop off, to get one of these four horns is incredibly difficult. Ancient cities certainly have a lot of mystery surrounding them, probably the most mysterious structure in the entire game by far. However, another mystery comes out of them, which is the fact that a lot of the structures here do look very similar to pillager and illager structures. For instance, this looks somewhat like a small pillager outpost. Also, there is a structure in the ancient city that's sort of a bridge between different walkways that also shares a striking resemblance to a pillager outpost tower. But as well as that, a structure here that looks very much like a woodland mansion is the wool area here. These are the exact same colors of wool that are stored in a woodland mansion wool room. And you can see there's piles of them here, and this generation just reminds me so much of that, especially with the dark oak wood, which definitely symbolizes illagers and pillagers, as all their structures generate with the dark oak wood. I would definitely say that when the Minecraft developers designed and added the ancient cities, they wanted the player to think one of two things. Either that the pillagers built the ancient cities, which is very possible, or more interestingly, that the pillagers discovered the ancient cities as well, and tried taking them over but failed, for instance, this bridge piece right here sort of tends to suggest that, considering that it does not look like these other bridge pieces here. It is made out of dark oak wood, and it's also slightly ruined. Leaves have had a massive change in Java Edition with 1.19, as they can now be waterlogged. Now in Bedrock Edition, this has been the case for a very long time, but this was just added to Java Edition for parody, and so it is quite an odd thing to be able to put random bits of water into trees. However, there are very many uses to this. For instance, if you have a lava bucket right next to this, this would turn into obsidian, or it would turn into cobblestone if it's flowing, so you can have some very interesting water sources there. It's also a way to have a waterlogged block where there's literally no angle in any direction where the water can escape from. So for instance, this isolated leaf here, there is no water escaping from any of the sides. And not only is this a really cool looking block, almost looking a bit like a globe if you have it in the right scenario, but as well as that, it's very useful for redstone. In another leaf related feature of the wild update, of course, if you bone meal the bottom of a mangrove leaf, you will get these propagules that will grow out. But something you may not know is that this process can be fully automated. And so if we have a dispenser going to the top of the leaf, and we turn that on, that will have a propagule come out the bottom. And if we turn this on and off, no more propagules will come out, and we won't have this grow. However, if we have this dispenser at the bottom that is facing the propagule be turned on and off, that propagule will be bone mealed and will grow. And if, let's say, a piston coming out, we could break this repeat the process, and have a fully automatic way of getting saplings in the game, or propagules, which are basically mangrove saplings. And it's interesting because this is the first sapling in the entire game, which you can get 100% automatically with literally no player input, as if you hooked up a fully automatic bone meal farm to these, you could have an infinite fully automatic propagule farm. An interesting bug that's been fixed that definitely affects a lot of the game is that iron golems can now not spawn inside of blocks and suffocate, just like this one is right here, so they cannot do this anymore. Not many iron farms really utilized this, 
but I would often find around villages I would have iron golems summon in, die, and then I could just grab their iron. And so now this bug has finally been fixed. However, this also applied to the wardens when it was in the snapshots, so wardens could often summon in in a very small space and suffocate, but now both those bugs have been fixed, so you can no longer get free iron from suffocating your golems. Something you probably know is that 1.19 has added chest boats, but when they added these, they also changed a couple other features of the game. So normally before 1.19, when you would break, let's say, a minecart with chest, or a minecart with furnace, a minecart with TNT, and also with a minecart and hopper. What would happen is these would drop both of their items individually. So for instance here, we would get the minecart and the furnace back separately. Same with the chest, and same with the TNT, and also same with the hopper. However, as you can see, I'm getting these back in their combined form. And so in 1.19, once you craft these like this, you can never get them into separate items again, which is definitely a good thing to note. And it's the same thing with the chest boats, as when you break this, this does not break as a chest and a boat. It breaks as a boat with chest, and they will never separate. If you walk on wool, no signals will be sent to the sensors if you are jumping or running or just walking without sneaking. And it's the same for dropping items on top of wool blocks. These will not be sensed by the skulk sensors there. However, what's kind of interesting is that this is the exact same with carpets, so you can place down carpets no issue, and you can also walk on top of them, and you do not have to worry about alerting any of the shriekers with the sensors there, and you can even throw items down on it, and it does that as well. And if you're trying to explore the ancient city, using carpets can be a much cheaper option, as well as the fact that they're easy to get rid of later if you want to preserve the ancient city. Just be aware that, of course, because the carpet isn't a full block, if we, let's say, broke the sensor here, the signals would still be sent from that over to the other blocks. And so for things like covering these up in wool so they don't send any signal, you'd still definitely want to use the full blocks. Chest boats are an awesome new item added to 1.19. However, something you may not know, which also makes them much more useful, is that they fully work with hoppers and any other item that would, let's say, work with maybe a chest minecart or a hopper minecart. And so for instance, if we put some items in the item hopper here, that will go into the boat with chest, and these are actually draining down into this, and if we put things into this, these will also drain down so you can put items into the chest and out of the chest with hoppers. That also technically means you can make a much more efficient hopper chain if it's very long, and are certainly worth to be tried out for some cool little things. For instance, you could have a dock where basically you row into it, and once you row over this hopper, any items that were in your chest would be picked up by that hopper and automatically unloaded. And maybe this could go into your sorting system, and you could sort of have a place where you park your chest boat and have things unloaded from it. So definitely some awesome capabilities here. Enderman skeletons and wither skeletons, the light level that they spawn at in the nether, has been changed in 1.19. They can now spawn in light level 0 to 11, and this makes it much harder to spawn proof against these mobs, and it also makes nether farms much more difficult, as all these different mobs will spawn in a much wider range of light levels, but definitely an interesting change that you might not have known about that does affect the nether quite a bit, and could also lead to things like more piglins and skeletons and things like that next to lava pools or fire, as they wouldn't be blocked by the light from that. Now most games that have random events will have a random number generator that they use, so that the game can process slight variations in certain items' performance. So for instance, when you're shooting arrows out of a dispenser like this, the place where they shoot and land to is affected by a random number generator. And this generator has been changed in 1.19. Now this may seem like a minor change, but it's actually a lot more affecting than you would think, because things like, for instance, arrows that would go way further out of their way than they should. So for instance, let's say when shooting a mob and you're definitely lined up with it correctly, and then you just cannot hit it. That's something that can be affected by the random number generator, so there shouldn't be as many random events that aren't really able to be predicted. This also affects things like dispensers dropping items, the player dropping items when they die. So also when you're dying, you may not have some of your items fall in lava that would be kind of far away from you, as they may not fly out as randomly far. When 1.17 added a lot of new blocks to the game, but they did not generate in, sometimes the only way you could get them was by trading with a wandering trader. For instance, this wandering trader here sells rooted dirt, 
and that change was also implemented into 1.19, which is the wandering trader will sell a 1.19 item you cannot get anywhere else without a long journey, and that is the mangrove propagule for 5 emeralds. This may seem like a bad deal, but it's actually an incredibly good deal considering how rare the mangrove swamp is, because a singular mangrove propagule will give you access to a very wide range of blocks, and considering that most of the other items that the wandering trader sells are rather easy to get your hands on, the mangrove propagule, as well as some of the other rare saplings it sells, can definitely be a very good deal to buy, and I'm glad they added these to be able to be purchased from the wandering trader, considering that mangrove swamps are definitely one of the rarest biomes in all of Minecraft. And finally, 1.19 has changed commands quite a bit. Now they've added one new game rule command, which is game rule do warden spawning, and you can turn that off to false. And so basically, if you have that on false, you will not get any wardens when you bother a shrieker. And this can be great if you just do not like that new warden feature. It's nice that Mojang added that functionality, as it enables players the choice to turn that off if they want. Also, because using commands is sort of like cheating, what you can do is when you first create a world, you can customize the game rule there, so you never have to turn cheats on, but you can still not have the warden be summoning in. One other command change is to the locate command. Now instead of locate and then buy on what you want or just the structure name, so for instance let's say locate village, now it goes down into point of interest, structure and biome. So for instance we could go locate structure ruin portal but there's also some interesting things here like for instance on ocean explorer maps, ruin portal desert, jungle, mountain, we can have different variants of these we find. And because of all these different things, they give us lots of options to find different structures. For instance, Minecraft cats spawn as black. And I would assume this would be a reference to a witch hut. So if you had this command run, you could see, for instance, it found us right here a swamp hut or a witch hut. And I'm guessing this would have to do with if you're modding the game and you're having different structures have these same attributes. But overall, definitely a very cool change and definitely makes this command be a little bit more potent. And those are the 20 Minecraft 1.19 changes that you missed. I'll see you in the next video, and I hope you have a great day, although this witch is not having a very good day.